this could be Loose Women's sauciest interview ever. Whoa. <laughs> Our next guest, who goes by the pen name The Secret Socialite, has released this summer's raciest read. It's called Naked in Mayfair oh. and follows the shocking sex exploits of a newly divorced woman with some of London's wealthiest men based on her own life. I can tell you, we haven't had, got a word out of Judy all through makeup this morning. She doesn't stop reading it. Juicy. <laughs> it is juicy. Juicy. But who is this mysterious author? Well, she's here but she's keeping her identity a secret, so mm. we just have her behind this. Wow. No peeking. <laughs> Kelly's being very naughty and peeking. I um, am. She's pretty sexy. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. And, and we are going to call you Ava, and I have to say, say it's been quite a palaver getting you in today because you are so anxious about being seen. There was smuggling you in. There was all sorts of things going on. Why are you so afraid? I don't think I don't think I and by the way, first of all I'd like to say hello and thank you for inviting me on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure. I, I don't think I'm afraid, but as a mother of two children and somebody who's been in finance for many, many years, it was important for me to predict the identity of the men in the book, and also out of respect to my family oh. to keep my identity secret. What is it? Everything that's in the book, and as I say, Judy's been sweating all morning. Um, <laughs> have you done everything that's in the book? Well, like all good authors, I think you, you write what you know. Yeah. Um, and certainly I'm inspired by real-life events. I'm also inspired by seeing other women around me who are above 40, who are getting divorced and who have now an opportunity to reinvent themselves and find love again second time around. Do you know what? I, I love that uh, about you, Ava, what you said. And, and reading the book, I'm going to be honest, literally page two, <laughs> the sauce and the juice was there. <laughs> and, and, and I love that you get straight to it, because I, I don't, how do you feel about the fact, I think that society projects that women are quite sexually oppressed. Like, we're kind of putting a box on how we're supposed to be desired and what we want in our, in our, for our pleasure. Is that something that you faced, why you really wanted to write this book? Well, I think what's really interesting is that sex is absolutely everywhere in our society. We use it to sell beer, we use it to sell shampoo. And yet sex, sex is still very much a taboo topic and we, we never really talk about it. And I think through the ages, since millennia, um, there's been this Madonna whore complex, which Freud talked about, and you're either one or the other. So if you're the Madonna, you're the mother, you're quite saintly, you're untouchable, and you're very, very respected, but you're not very desired. And if you're the whore, or what I prefer to call a bombshell, you're very, very desirable, you love sex, and yet you're not very respected by society. Yeah, and you're, I think, what I think I want... you're really right about the fact that that is something that we have noticed yeah. as we get older, we have mm. to choose our box so to speak. Do you find, considering you've also explored the men that you've had these relationships with and who you write about, that the men also have those similar like-for-like -like boxes or do you think they can get away with maybe more than women of that age? I think sexuality for men is, is different. It's about virility. It's about being out there and being Jack the Lad. And I think for women, it's far harder to navigate. And what I tried to show with the book is what can a healthy sexuality look like? And I think maybe some people might say that some of the things in the book are quite extreme, but I wanted to really start a conversation about what sex is like second time around. And, and I think after 40, you have a bit more confidence yes, than at 20. Yeah. And you've got a real chance to redefine what your objectives are and what you're looking for in life. Which was, it was kind of the catalyst for you to write this book, wasn't it? Your divorce. You've described yourself, I'm looking at, she's a bombshell, I have to say. Yeah. But, but you described yourself in your 20s as mousy and you were quite shy. And what, what was it? What, where did this rebirthing come from? Well, genuinely came through pain. And I, I started writing the book through pain because for me, the divorce was a failure. Um, but I'm a very positive person. I always like to see the bright fight side of things. And I wanted the book to be fun and racy and affirmative. And it's a chance really to redefine your goals. And I wanted to turn something that was negative, which is a divorce into something positive. And 
also to be strong for my children and to show them that I could pull through this and find love again. Uh, because it's only your children, if I'm right, and your ex-husband that know your identity, is that right? Yes. So your friends are the Oh, my God. now, but so you can't stop really your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's thing. So do your, none of your friends in the banking world that know no you and your friends, they do, do they think you just, you're at home, like, doing the gardening while you're actually writing this sort of thing? She's doing the gardening, but yeah. it's just a different kind of gardening. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, you've, you've done this book, so you got divorced, you've completely reinvented your life, and Fifty Shades of Grey, like, I'm real prudish, but this book is, like, taking it to another level. Was this sort of preempted in your change and your transition, or, like, how did you get to going from this to that? Well, I think the title of the book is Naked in Mayfair, and it can be interpreted on several levels. So, there's a lot of sex, it's very erotic, it's a sexy summer read, but for me, being naked is the precursor to finding love, which is you can only really find love if you're vulnerable mm. and you need to connect on a deep, intimate level, and that's about being naked emotionally. So would, you say your, would you say that you love your body? Because there's a lot of women that always yeah. doubt ourselves, don't like what we see in the mirror. Do you, have you got to a point in life where you, like, you love yourself? I, I, I would struggle to point to one woman who has reached that point. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I say. That's the yeah. top of the match. Well, this listen, book, thank though, you so this, much, this Ava, for, for coming in. <laughs> we'll be, well, I might need to... Can we just down. put this away? <laughs> Otherwise, we're going <laughs> to have Judy concentrate for the rest of the show. <laughs> thank you so much, <laughs> and good luck, and uh, lovely to kind of see you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.